Hey, up next we have Mitchell Orlowski from History, and he will be presenting on fear, money, and racism in the 1920s, a recipe for disaster. So as mentioned, um, I've, I've been researching the uh, KKK. On, uh, on July 4th, 1923, 5,000 members were inducted into the Ku Klux Klan here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. That's just on one day. Um, throughout 1920 to 1924, there were over three to six million different uh, United States citizens who joined the KKK. My name is Mitchell Olosky. I'm currently a senior in standing researching the, uh, the KKK. I I'm a history major and a uh, polls minor. I'm currently working with uh, Professor S uh, Slicka Duxworth Lawton on this uh, project. Um, I came up with this my sophomore year of high school or, or sophomore year of uh, college. Um, I've been researching this for two years now. Um, so first of all, what, uh, what, what you have to understand is that the 1920s Klan was the second Klan. So the first Klan really made its uh, surgence in about 1866, right after the Civil War and the Reconstruction era um, of the United States and the South. In 1915, it emerged in, in Georgia and most of the southern states, and then gradually moved northwards into the Midwest, into the East, into the West. Um, and from there, it lasted until 1944, and then it resurfaced once again during the Civil Rights era. And once again, after that, there is a modern era clan still existing to this day. So the research that I've been doing, um, what, what's the relevance? Well, it's really hard to discuss that without discussing all the current uh, political situations in both the United States and in France and around the world. So unless you've been living underneath a rock for the past two years, um, Donald Trump has been elected uh, president here. Now, I'm not comparing him to the Klan, but what I am saying is that it took him about two to three months to actually denounce the Klan and what they've been talking about. Um, they actually supported uh, uh, President Trump now, um, and they did that during the um, 2016 election. Now, in France, we see Marine Le Pen, who did very well um, in her first election. She is currently running for uh, president. And we see many fascist, well, neo-fascist groups as well as white, uh, uh, white, white supremacist groups who have supported her in that. Um, I'm not comparing the Klan here to them specifically, but what I am saying is that through my research, I have uh, uh, discovered that there's an excess of wealth here in Wisconsin in the 1920s that caused many people to be able to join the Klan. Along with that is this uh, residue of fear from World War I. Now, there's a residue of fear now from 9-11, from different terrorist attacks, and that is what has led many people to join white supremacist groups even to this day. Thank you. So the question is, um, what exactly I, I plan to do with, the, with all the uh, research that I've been done? Well, I really want to educate people on this topic. I think it's very important that we understand um, just what went on in the 1920s. I think people tend to think that you know, the Klan was this terrorist, or this terrorist uh, group, and that's mainly in the 1960s, but in the 1920s, it was more of a social organization. And I think that we need to understand that with this residue of fear that happened in World War I, that's still occurring to this day with 9-11. Uh, so we have many anti-Semitic groups who are uh, resurging. We have anti-Muslim groups who are also uh, currently you know, working. Um, and so understanding what's going on and then applying that and just letting people know that this is a part of our history. And um, we need to be sure that we are applying history the best ways possible to the present.